Jesus. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. Well, you're not actually here, or maybe you're there. But uh, thank you for being here today, this morning, present in the Spirit of God. Amen. Uh, I believe today's message is going to bless you. I believe it's going to uplift you. I believe it's going to change some things in your life and perspective. Amen. Um, and today we are in, we're still in the uh, Parables with Jesus series. And you can watch each individually or you can go back and watch the rest of them, each one by one. But they're in no specific order, so you can watch any of them. Amen. And today's parable is the parable of the wedding banquet. Okay. And we're going to be in Matthew 22, verse 1. But before we get into it, all right, share this with somebody. Tell this, uh, uh, share it with somebody. Send it to somebody because somebody needs to get blessed today. Somebody, God is trying to reach somebody. Amen. And, and it is our duty not to keep the blessings to ourselves, but to pass them on. Amen. So before we get into it, let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. We want to thank you for this beautiful day, just the, the, the time of fellowship, Lord God. Uh, um, and, and God, open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive your word, to be able to receive your blessings, Lord God, that it may be you and not of my flesh, Lord God, that speaks out, Lord God. And we thank you for today in your precious name. Amen. Matthew 22, verse 1 through 14. And this is Jesus speaking again. All right. Matthew 22 verse 1. It says this. Jesus spoke to them again in parables saying, "The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come." Then he sent some more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He, the king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes or a wedding garment. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. The King James says, many are called, but few are chosen. And the wedding clothes, that's why I said garment, because in the King James it says garment. All right? So just a couple things. But So Jesus is saying right here that the kingdom of heaven is like this wedding banquet. Okay? Now... The thing you have to understand about back then when weddings went on, they went on not for one day of celebration. They went on for a week, you know, a whole week. So what is the invitation? The invitation is your invitation to salvation. So when it says here, they went out, you know, to invite them to come. The invitation is your invitation to salvation, okay? So this is a parable. Jesus is saying, like this wedding banquet, so is the kingdom of heaven, okay? God, the king, God the Father, he is the king in this scenario. He sent out his servants to 
uh, uh, tell people, right, that there is a place ready for you. There, I have prepared it. The, the, the banquet is going on. There's a celebration. Come. Right? Come to heaven. You guys getting that? So it is an invitation to, to salvation. Receive your salvation. These servants went out and they're like, here's the invitation. Here is your salvation. Receive your salvation. To where? To the, batting, to, to the uh, wedding banquet. What is the wedding banquet? Heaven. Receive your salvation into heaven. Here is your invitation, right? Here is your salvation. Receive it. Some people said, nah, I don't have time for that, right? They ignored it. Who are the servants? Who are the servants? The servants are all uh, uh, the pastors, the preachers, the evangelists, the prophets, the disciples. These are the servants of the king, of God. We are the servants when we preach the gospel we are his servants. We are his messengers preaching out to the word. Here is your invitation for you. Receive your invitation. Receive the good news. So we go on. Every Sunday that I'm preaching a word, I'm saying, receive God's invitation. And then what, what do I tell you guys? Hey, don't just receive it. Pass it on, right? When I tell you guys, share this, pass on the invitation. Tell everybody around you. Don't be stingy with it. See, when you got something good, you know, you could either be stingy with it or you can be good and share it with everybody else, right? When some of my kids or me or whatever my family, oh, this is good, try it, right? Oh, try it, try it, try it. That's what we should be doing with Jesus. This is good. Try it. Right? It's better than candy. I just had some coffee, so it's better than coffee. It was a little chocolatey, a little sugary, but see, Jesus is better than that. A lot of people wake up and they're like, I need my coffee. Wake up. You need Jesus. That should be first. Not your coffee. Jesus, all right? So the messengers are all the preachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, disciples. We are the messengers. Anybody that's sharing the good news is the messenger of God. Amen? And then it says, some people ignored it. They didn't want to hear the good news. See, some people will tune into this like, uh, I don't want to hear it. You might send it to somebody else and they're like, nah, I didn't listen to it. See? But it's okay. Our message is to share it. Now, it is up to them if they want to receive it or not. If they want to receive the invitation to salvation or not, it is up to them. So a lot of people here, they said, oh, they just ignored it. Oh, I got better things to do. I got I to gotta work on, on, uh, on my job. I, gotta, I got a lot of things to do on my business or on my farm, right? I said on this farm or, or different things, right? I got, I got a lot of stuff to do, Jesus. I got a lot of stuff to do, God. I'll receive your invitation another day. Mm. That is scary. Because when you think that you're going to receive it another day, that day might be your last day and you won't get that opportunity again. Don't pass on your invitation. Don't pass on your salvation. See? But what, what happened here? So God sent them over and over and over again, right? See, before everybody dies on this earth, before you die, you, somebody would have come to you telling you, about the love of Christ. Everybody will have that opportunity. Now, now then what happened? So some people are like, nah, whatever, I don't want to hear you, Jesus. I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time for you. Right? But then there's some people that are, what happened? 
Now, some people were vengeful, and they're like, oh, you're talking about his message, right? And they killed him, all right? They said here, they killed him. They went out, they invited them. Some people were like, nah, I don't want to hear it. And then some people, the rest of the people, they grabbed him and they killed him. They killed the messenger. It is still going on around the world right now that there's a lot of people dying for preaching the gospel. All around the world. See? They're killing God's messengers. We need to wake up, people. We need to wake up. Right? Because even in America, they're changing laws and they're changing things around this country. And it is becoming, uh, 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 it, it's gonna, there's going to be a time where when I preach this message, it's going to be considered a hate message and I will be prosecuted for it. Those times are coming, even in America. They're constantly changing laws that contradict the word of God. Wake up. We need to wake up. Receive your salvation now. Receive your invitation now. Those things are happening. There's a lot of laws changing in America. A lot of politicians that are evil. There's good ones, but there's also a lot of evil. Amen? But then what happened? But see, God is a righteous God. Hmm. What happened? When they killed his servants, what happened? He destroyed them. He destroyed their cities. Right? The Bible says, touch not my anointed. God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So God warns people not to harm his messenger. See? Oh, but God's a good loving God. Yeah, but God is a righteous God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So he doesn't forget about the people, those that hurt God's prophets, those that hurt God's messengers. See, there's consequences for those actions. Amen. Now, I've received a lot of death threats over my years. But tell you what, I am still here. God protects me. And if I die... I go to heaven. So it's not a big deal for me. Because I have that relationship with God. Right? And I ain't scared. You know, like that song used to say, if you're scared, go to church. Well, if you're scared, go to God. Amen? Because God took away that fear when I became a Christian. I ain't afraid no more because I got the almighty God. The army of the Lord. Amen. And then in verse 8, 9, and 10, right? So he said, the king said, you know what? They didn't want to hear the word. They didn't want to uh, receive my invitation. Right? They didn't want to receive my invitation to salvation. Right? So now he tells them, go out into the highways, go out into the byways, go and grab those people and bring them in here. See, the message was, was first preached into the Jews. And then the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? You are the Gentile. I am the Gentile. You know those people that that the misfits that the church looks down upon, those are the Gentiles, the prostitutes, the drug addicted, the thieves, the liars, those, the, the sinners. That's what God is saying right here. Listen, all these church folks don't want to listen. Go out into the streets and grab my people. Whoo! 
You are being chosen today. God is choosing you. Well, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. That's right. God is choosing you. Mm. That's what he's saying here. He's inviting you. He's choosing you. Amen? The misfits, the ones that don't fit in, the outcasts, grab them, he said. Grab them out there. The ones that are in the streets, grab them. The ones that have been kicked out of church, grab them. Thank you, Jesus. That one, the ones that don't feel like they're worthy enough, grab them. Thank you, Jesus. See? Now, so, and then what happens? Watch this, right? Because a lot of people are asking this question. You, you, he notices, so the king goes in and he notices a man that is not wearing wedding clothes or wedding garment. That, that one's interesting, right? So you're saying, oh, Pastor David, I mean, I mean so God, if, if you don't wear the right clothes, you're not going to make it. In. No, 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 that's not what he's saying. Okay. Today I wear a suit. Last time I wear shirts. It doesn't matter what you wear on the outside. It's what you wear on the inside. Hmm. Watch this, watch this. He said, you're not, wedding, you're, you're not wearing any wedding clothes. And, wh and what did he say? He said, grab them, tie them up, throw them into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of the teeth. What is that? That means hell, okay? That means hell. And I don't have a lot of time to get into it, but go back to the last video, last Sundays. I preached about hell. I preached about weeping and gnashing of the teeth. All right? So this man wasn't wearing... wearing uh, uh, a wedding garment or wedding clothes, and he got thrown into the lake of fire, into uh, uh, outer darkness, right? And so, what is that wedding garment? What is that wedding clothes? I'm glad you asked. See, the wedding garment represents the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. This man didn't put on the righteous man, righteousness of God. Okay? Now, the righteousness of God was provided for him. He did not put it on. Okay? What is the righteousness of God? Watch, Isaiah 61.10. Okay? Isaiah 61.10, it says this. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. Okay. And arrayed me in the robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adores his head like a priest. And as a bride adorns herself with jewels. And then I want to show you. So it says right there, right? It says, uh, um. It says, the robe, a robe of righteousness, garments of salvation, okay? It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about putting on Jesus Christ. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says this. 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of of God. So, like I said, God provides you the garments. God provided you Jesus Christ. He provided you a way out. Jesus said, I am the door. Right? He is the righteousness of God. So, when you put on Jesus Christ, you're putting on the righteousness of God. You're being more Christ-like. That means your old ways are starting to die and your new ways because you're becoming more like Christ. That, that is what Christ-like is. When you put on Jesus Christ upon your life, upon your heart, 
People might not see it on the outside, but there's something changing within the inside. You put on the righteousness of God. This man tried to come in without putting Jesus Christ on. God, the king, provided him the garments. That's Jesus Christ. He refused to put it on. You can't come in. This is saying you cannot come in by any other way except when you put on Jesus Christ. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Hinduism, not by your own works or by your own, by your own uh, works and, and, and things that you do. Not because you're good, but because he's God and he is Christ. It is when we put on Christ upon our lives that you can come in into heaven, that you are saved. See? And a lot of people on this earth are saying, well, I do a lot of good, so I'm going to go to heaven. It doesn't matter what you do. You have to put on Jesus Christ. That is mercy. We are all sinners. We have all sinned. We are not good enough, but when we put on Christ, the righteousness, we're putting on the righteousness of God. Hmm. I hope you're getting that. See, you might wear a $10 shirt from Walmart, a $20 pants from, from Walmart. These people might wear $100 pants and and, and, and a hundred dollar shirt. But guess who looks good? The one that's putting on Jesus Christ looks good. That's why in the morning when you put on Christ, you should be like, man, I look good. Huh? That looks like the righteousness of God on me. Right? Doesn't matter how you feel, when you're putting on Christ, you look good. Hey man, put on Christ. There's no other way. All right? You have to receive Christ in your life. You have to accept the invitation, which is the word of God, right? It's your salvation. Today is the day to accept your invitation into the wedding banquet, into heaven. What do you have to do? Put on Jesus Christ. Ask him for forgiveness. Once you put on Jesus Christ, he'll begin to change you. You'll begin to, you'll begin to look like Christ. Right? You'll begin to change within the inside. Put on Christ today. Today is the day. This is your invitation. Will you receive it today? Will you receive Jesus Christ? If that is you, we're going to pray. Amen. I hope you're blessed by this message. Everybody that's watched this, please share it. Amen. And share the love of Christ upon others. Let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. Lord, and right now we ask for forgiveness, Lord God. We want to accept your invitation, Lord God. To your, to into heaven, Lord God. Lord, we, we ask that, that we not pass you by, Lord God, that, that we not uh, uh, pass this moment, Lord God, but that we may be present, Lord God, to receive your salvation, Lord God. We want to receive everything you have for us, Lord God. So, so, Lord, right now, Lord God, we receive Christ in our hearts, in our lives. Forgive us for our sins, Lord God. And, and Lord, make us into a new person, more Christ-like, more like you. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. Bless those who are watching, Lord God. Bless those who, who are in the hospital bed right now, those that are sick. We rebuke sickness out of your body right now in the name of Jesus. Those with COVID right now, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We cast all infirmities out of your bodies, all diseases out of your bodies right now in the name of Jesus. God is all powerful. He said by his stripes, you are healed. Thank you, Jesus. So start believing it, start speaking it, start receiving it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. <laughs>
because God works in mysterious ways, amen? And even when you don't see it, God is always working. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Bless marriages, Lord God, and bless our children. Protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope you're blessed. Go visit the website. And until next time, God bless.